Hello, and welcome to my channel. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, bringing the United States into World War II. Shortly after that attack, it was determined that many of the planes had radio direction finders and were homing in on their target by following the radio waves from Honolulu broadcast stations. As a result, <clears throat> the United States and many of its allies banned all non-essential radio communications through the air. It was a widespread ban and included amateur radio operators, which could not broadcast during the entirety of the war. But the French resistance and other resistance forces needed a way to communicate short range with their partners in order to coordinate attacks. They turned to ground communications and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the French used something that looks similar to this. They had an audio source, which could be a microphone or music or code, Morse code. They had an audio amplifier, which was anywhere from 5 to 100 watts. And they had a transformer. The transformer matched the output of the audio amplifier into the ground electrodes which transmitted the signal. Now this is the low impedance side of the transformer and it's adjustable. This is the high impedance side and it's also adjustable. The electrodes are three feet deep at least and they're 15 to 40 feet apart. The farther apart they are the better. Now an alternate transformer would be uh, much more readily available and that was would be one that has a winding in the primary of 120 or 220 volts AC and um, 6.3 volts AC center tap. So it's 12 volts, uh, 6.3 volts on either side of the center tap. And this is what we're going to try to use for our transmitter. Now the receiver is basically, uh, could be one of two things. Could be a high impedance earphone these are not the typical earphones you have around the house or you plug into your radio. These are high impedance crystal earphones which have a very high impedance, 20,000 ohms. Uh, and you put those across another set of electrodes that are buried in the ground. Again, at least three feet deep, depending on how far you want to go. And the other alternative is to have a set of electrodes going into a hum filter, which may or may not be needed an audio amplifier again, and a speaker. And that's it. That's pretty much the entire uh, system. And we're going to try it out and see if it works. And first I'm going to show you some components. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the parts now that we need to build this communication system. First thing we want to use is this radio as an audio source. Um, instead of a microphone, since I'm only one person, I can't be in two places at the same time. Uh, this is going to be our audio source. It's just a simple radio and it's got an output jack here that's going to feed into the audio amplifier. So that's the first thing we're going to use. Um, the audio amplifier, you can use this, one of these speaker systems, PC speakers. Uh, it should be at least 5 watts. This one here is 25 watts RMS and 50 watts peak. So you could use, you could use this and feed the audio source into this and take the output speakers off and feed that into the next component. However, I'm going to try to use this. This is a 14 watt audio amplifier I got online. I'll put the, I'll put the description and the link in the, in the uh, description below the video. Uh, this was only three bucks and it's 14 watts output so that's pretty good. So I think we're going to try that. And then the transformers. These are a couple transformers and I don't think the transformers are critical. It's nice, as I mentioned, if they have uh, taps on the primary and the secondary. We're trying to convert the low impedance output of the audio amplifier to the higher impedance of the ground rods in the earth. Um, this is another similar transformer. Uh, happens to be 220, 240 on one side and 12, 8, and 15 volts on the other. So we have a variety. I think, I think both of these will, will work okay. Um, so now for the receiver part, we're going to have the two ground rods connected to either a high, high impedance 
uh, earphone, which I have here. I got this at Amazon. This has 20,000 ohms input impedance, so it's very high impedance. Or, and or, we're going to use one of these audio amplifiers again and connect the, um, the uh, actual ground rods to the input of the amplifier and we're going to connect a speaker to the output so we can hear something. And that's what this is right here. So uh, we're not going to worry about the hum filter right now. I'm going to assume there's not going to be hum uh, or not enough to bother us. Uh, the hum filter is to, to tune out any uh, 60 hertz or 120 hertz line noise from, from the area. Okay, so we're going to hook this all up. We're going to test it and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the actual ground rods in the basement and then we'll go outside and look at the ground rods in the earth which took me some doing because the ground is frozen and I managed to pound one of the ground rods uh, right into the uh, into the earth about five feet. The other ground rod I'm going to use is the well casing on my deep well. It goes down about 265 feet but the metal casing goes down about 35 feet. Okay so we're going to put all this together, try it, test it and be right back. This is the ground rod right underneath the fuse panel and I'm going to disconnect those wires temporarily when I do this experiment so they're isolated, so the uh, ground rod is isolated. It's an 8 foot uh, long ground rod so it's going to be in the ground about uh, 7 feet or so. This is the uh, second ground rod in the basement and this one's about 48 feet uh, from the first one I just showed you. Again I'm going to take away the wires and and uh, isolate this ground rod. This is the inside setup here of the transmitter. Here's the transmitter. Um, this is the, these are the wires going to the two electrodes inside and these are the wires going to the uh, transformer from the, the uh, audio amplifier. Uh, you might notice this is a different module uh, than the one I originally showed you and the reason for that is I blew both of them because one thing these things are sensitive to is wrong polarity and I had the polarity hooked up uh, incorrectly. Also this one is a little more expensive it's five bucks a, a piece five to six dollars each but instead of 12 watts it puts out 32 watts. So let's go outside now. This is the 8 foot ground rod uh, first one I, I pounded in. Uh, it's in the ground about five feet and over here is a smaller copper uh, pipe, copper tubing for plumbing and that's in the ground about a foot and a half and that's about 10 or 12 feet away. I have another copper tubing um, rod right here, electrode. That's in the ground about 18 inches to 2 feet also. And then in the woods, I don't know if you can see it, is my well right there is the wellhead. So um, I want to talk about all those and the results. I showed a slide of the placement of the electrodes so let's now talk about the results. First of all the audio source the little portable radio I had that worked fine there was plenty of output uh, going into the audio amplifier. Uh, the audio amplifier itself was rated at 32 watts of maximum power uh, at 24 volts DC. Um, if you get one, make sure, and I wasn't clear about this one, that it specified an RMS. So RMS is like an average power rating versus a peak power. So RMS is more powerful. A 32 watt RMS output is, is uh, better than a, a 32 watt peak power. I think you need at least 32 watts. Um, 100 would probably be better. I ran the, the audio amplifier with 12 volts and then I upped it to 16 volts so it was still probably considerably under the 32 watts maybe I was maybe 20 watts. Um, in one case where I was using the a laptop power supply to power the amplifier I heard a little bit of whining in the speaker and I think that's because the laptop power supply or switching power supplies and it has some noise in it so just be aware of that. I, picked a different laptop power supply and the winding went away. Also as I mentioned before you have to have the correct polarity on these types of audio amplifiers. They won't get too hot, don't worry about shorting the output, it's uh, protected for that. But you must have the uh,
correct polarity. I had the volume control at pretty much maximum. <coughs> and <coughs> as far as the outside ground connections went, um, I showed it in the previous diagram. There was an 8 foot ground rod I pounded into the ground about 5 feet. There were a couple of copper tubing electrons, uh, electrodes and they were about 18 inches in the ground uh, at varying, varying spacing so I could, I could test the difference. Uh, the ground rod <coughs> that I pounded into the, into the soil at 5 feet was you, always used as one electrode. Uh, <coughs> what I mentioned here, uh, I did not use the well casing. It did not work at all. And then I thought about it and I realized it was a steel casing around the well and it was all rusted. And rust is an insulator. So that's probably the reason it didn't work at all. The two t copper tubes with the ground war, uh, rod worked worked pretty well. Um, one of them, one of the copper tubes was 10 feet away from the ground rod, and the other one was 60 feet away. I think the one that was 60 feet away was a little louder. I used a crystal earphone. I didn't use an amplifier. Um, it was pretty cold out there, and it was windy, and I didn't have power out there. Uh, both had hum on the audio. Uh, the distance from the transmitter electrodes to the receiver electrodes were about was about a hundred feet. That's about as far as I way I could get them without going into the woods. Um, the transformer that I used, <clears throat> it has to be rated for the power you're using. Don't get one of those little skinny small power transformers or it'll probably blow up. Um, I did change the transformers, uh, the taps on the transformer, and these were power transformers. Uh, and the audio did get a little stronger. Um, everything I did seemed to improve the audio a little bit uh, than the last time. I also thought, why not use a variable transformer, such as a Variac? So I tried that using the Variac in reverse, the output uh, of the amplifier going into the output of the Variac, and the primary of the Variac uh, going to the electrodes. And I think I got the best sound using the Variac, and I could adjust it. Uh, the strongest seemed to be when the Variac was, <clears throat> was set to 10 volts output. So other things you want to consider or think about if you're going to do this type of experiment. First, there was a lot of surface snow, as you could tell in there. The ground was frozen down to about two feet. I don't know how much that affected the, the performance and the distance. Um, depending on whether you have clay soil or sandy soil, clay soil is usually better because it holds moisture and sandy soil usually dries out faster. Um, so the moisture, the con the co moisture content of the soil is, is kind of important. Uh, again, the power output of the audio amp, I think next time I would do, go at least 50 and preferably 100 watts. Um, I measured the resistance between the receiving electro electrodes with, this, with the snow there. And the resistance was about 12,000 to 15,000 ohms. The capacitance I measured was about 1,500 picofarads. And why did I do that? Well, I was trying to think about how, what the impedance level was. You could uh, think about measuring the impedance with an LCR meter, measuring the inductance, the capacitance, the resistance, and then figuring out what the uh, impedance was and trying to match it to the output of the, the transformer. Um, also, you might want to think about is the orientation of the transmit electrodes and the receiving electrodes important. I had a feeling that if I, I, I was parallel, if they were parallel, um, I would get better, better results. However, I didn't, I didn't try that. I uh, was limited by the geography, um, and my electrodes were you know, fixed where they were in the house. Um, also, I, I think, from what I've read, this, this system might be good from anywhere from a half a mile to several miles. But all of these factors enter into it, and uh, uh, your results may vary. But uh, I think it was an interesting experiment. I, I learned a lot. I was able to duplicate the results um, that I see in the, in the literature. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe. And see you in the next video.